Hello everybody and welcome again. This is Dave from Double Edge Racing. This is one of the series of tools, tips, tricks, and techniques videos. Today we're going to be covering the electronics tray and some of the things that I've done with that. But since it's been a little while, I'm also going to show you some of the upgrade parts that I've put into here and explain why. Uh, the first one that I'm going to cover is this. Because the last time you saw me there were just some arms on the back. There's TKR5433. These are the rear arm mud guards for the uh, Techno Truggy, and I recommend that you put the mud guards on just about any vehicle, unless you're constantly racing on sugar or carpet and don't have any kind of dust, dirt, or debris flying around. This makes it much easier to keep your vehicle clean. Uh, things like your drive shafts will continue to move. Uh, more freely and not have the dust and dirt in them and it's a pretty cool effect as well uh, what's really nice about the Truggy version is that it's actually a thick Lexan so if you get these and send it off to your painter with the body you can actually have this painted to give you additional designs as well uh, the next one I'll cover is a convenience one that I really like this is the TKR5262 it's the CNC split center diff mount uh, this goes around here. Now it does come with a split center diff to start with, but it is not an aluminum version of that. Uh, this will add a little bit more rigidity in here, so slightly more durability, but it'll also make it a little easier to work with, especially if things get cold, uh, so that your screws are always going to line up exactly the same way. You're not going to deal with plastic flex or stripping them out if you constantly do maintenance on your diffs. This one here is one that I do highly recommend on the Truggy. This is only something that will be available for the Truggy. The others don't need or have it, and that is TKR5676A. This is that rear center drive shaft. The main difference here is that it is going to be an aluminum and lighter uh, drive shaft, so you're going to reduce the rotating mass. You also end up with a slightly stiffer and straighter uh, drive shaft as well to reduce vibrations and make things run more efficiently because of that too. This is one that I like to do on all my vehicles. This is more just a uh, this is more for bling but it is the steering servo brace the carbon fiber version uh, and it does add a slight bit more stiffness but it's nothing that anybody is really going to notice. It's also a little bit lighter so it can help lighten up the front corner of the vehicle on what's typically the heavy side. So this is TKR5060C. The last one I'm going to cover is something that you will see me talking about today uh, and that is this. This is the one upgrade that every single Techno must have. If your servo does not come with an aluminum servo horn or mine actually does, uh, but I'm going to use this anyway, is TKR5253B. This is the aluminum servo horn, and the difference between the original, which doesn't have the B, and the new one, is that the new one with the B has two different holes here. That's the key difference. And that allows you, with a faster servo or with a uh, less torquey servo, to move this in. And by doing that, you'll be nicer to the servo, it won't put as much strain on the servo, and it will also give you a slightly easier to drive vehicle. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Uh, I'm going to start by showing you some of the things that I've done. The first thing that you're going to see is that when properly done, all of your wires are going to easily go right down the inside here. And there is a nice channel that sits down in. Now you'll notice that I've got two different extensions here and I've purposely moved the wires forward and backwards to get them right behind that brace. By doing this it helps hold them flat along with the brace that's here so that they're not going to get caught in anything, I don't need to worry about them, and they're not going to adversely affect anything including airflow. Moving along uh, you'll notice that this is where I put the switch for the Tekken. A uh, key piece of information that a lot of people, even veterans, don't remember or commonly forget if they know is make sure that on is forward on the vehicle. And this is important because if you come down hard this way, run into something, end up in a crash, someone crashes ahead of you and stops you, or someone jumps into you the wrong way on the straight, if on is forward, the only thing you can do is enforce that it is on. 
if on is backwards and you land in that uh, type of position, you can actually turn the switch off, which of course takes a much longer time to recover from than just a normal Marshall. The second thing is you will see the RX-8 position here. I have very often done this the opposite direction where the posts are on the back to get the shortest wires possible. But I'm doing this on purpose because I'm actually going to take all of the wires up and I'm going to twist the wire slightly so when I solder it all of the wires will come around the inside leaving the fan opening available. On a truggy or a buggy, uh, when you are running 4S or even 6S if you're doing so, you typically do not require a fan on most of your speed controls because they're not working as hard as, say, if you were using it on 2S. That being said, this is a truggy. I am going to be pushing it uh, and running it on 4S, so I am going to put the fan in there, and I want to make sure that there's plenty of available air for it to work with. Uh, this is my servo, which I've mentioned before, the 170S ProTech. They give you a very nice uh, addition here in that rather than just using washers that come with the kit, I'm using their mounting brackets. These are machined aluminum, uh, so they will sit in place and hold the servo nice and tight without anything moving. The portion that's going to be really key here, uh, beyond seeing that there's nice wires and, and that they've all been wrapped under posts underneath, uh, this is one that can actually give you a competitive advantage. Normally, your transponder is in the back. And when the transponder is in the back on, the, on here, if you're side by side with someone going across the line, they might actually win. Uh, and I've had this happen where I've had my transponder up front here and gone across the line actually about an inch behind somebody else in a competing uh, vehicle and I've won because their transponder was in the middle of their vehicle uh, for that different brand. <clears throat> that being said, how did I do this? Well, you could just stick it down there, but that's in a spot where the chassis is milled out, so it's not a really easy way to do it. So what you're going to see here, and I've got this in nice bright green so you can see it easily, so this is just a piece of curved Lexan, uh, or I should say angled Lexan. I cut it off of the side of one of my old two-wheel drive buggy bodies just so I could get that 90 degree angle. And I super glue it to the side of the servo and where the edge brace is, there's a little bit of a ridge there as well. I'll also super glue it down to that. So I've got two sides and then I just double stick tape the, the transponder down. Now this is only going to work with the small transponders such as the RC4 uh, and RC4 hybrids from MyLabs. If you have a larger one, there is not enough space to fit it here, so you will have to put it in the back like normal. Lastly, I do want to cover something that almost nobody ever thinks about, and that is how you mount the ESC. Uh, the ESC is mounted to the standard techno plate, uh, and I've done that just with the normal uh, 3M heavy-duty uh, outside wall mount tape, uh, which a lot of people use in place of standard servo tape. But this is the key here. There are three screws that hold that in, and most people just crank them down, just like they do every other screw. Well, there's actually a rubber o-ring that you've taken the time to glue in down there and that's there to allow shock absorption so you don't want to crank these down and in fact if I take this and I press on my ESC you should be able to see for example this screw here it moves and what you want to do is you want to take this and while you're pressing about as hard as you can on that side of the plate you want this to be completely flush you don't want it to stick out because you don't want to be able to end up hitting the ground or something like that uh, with that portion and sending shock to the ESC. But by having this little bit of movement here, that's allowing the ESC to, have, to use those O-rings as additional cushioning. And this will drastically prolong the life of your ESC and make it much easier on your electronics. The same is true over here on the side pod, except the side pod sits further up than the bottom of the chassis, so you don't typically have to worry about slapping. So that can actually have even more give. Uh, right now, I don't have it set that way. I've got it again set for flush. But by doing this, 
that allows you to maintain your ESCs much happier uh, so that you won't have problems. Anyway, that is another one of these. So let's go into the last bit, which is setting your servo horn. Now, I haven't soldered up my electronics yet, so the servo is not centered, but I'm going to put this on here anyway, as if it were, just to be able to show you this. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your steering is lined up. And the easiest way to do that is to look at the screws right here on the Ackerman. And by doing so, you can say, I've got it the exact same amount on both sides. Once it's straight and your servo is centered, you want your servo horn and this to be as parallel as possible. That should happen with about one millimeter here. Uh, so that's why you see the one millimeter marked in the manual. I'm gonna, if you don't have that perfectly straight, you're going to put your horn on in the closest to straight possible situation, and then you're going to use your sub trim to adjust it sideways until it's in a spot that matches up. Once it is, then you're going to look at the link. Now, one thing that you're going to notice here is that the, is that the link is leaning down. We don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to build up on this side with shims because we want this link to be as level as possible. Now the stock actually puts a shim in here on the servo horn as well. So I'm, I'm going to remove that to drop this side some. Uh, and this will drop a little bit once I press it the rest of the way on. Uh, and so I'm probably going to end up with two shims here and none here. This will vary depending on what servo horn you use. The techno horn does go down nice and low. If you have a, a normal horn that goes straight out and or raises it, uh, you might have to put a significant amount of shimming in here in order to get this close to level. The closer this is to level, the easier it is on the servo because you're not changing the angles of the torque all the time. Uh, but if you go much longer than one or two shims, you may actually need a longer screw to go down through here. That's perfectly fine. The nut is on the bottom and there is absolutely nothing that a longer screw is going to run into. So if you need to use a much longer screw, that's completely fine uh, and you won't have any problems. Anyway, that's how you should set that up and how you can get consistent steering each time in the same order. Uh, hope that helps and we'll see you next time.